What's going on, everybody? Dave Bloom back here. Today we are talking about ostinados. Uh, for those of you who don't know what an ostinato is, the simplest form, it's just a reoccurring pattern. Exactly what it is. It's a pattern. It's like hit and repeat and constantly looping that pattern over and over again. And today, just to kind of break into this, because this is an introduction to this world um, for, you know, for what we're exploring, we're just playing 1E and 2E and 3E and 4E and on the hi-hat. So, 1E and 2E and... 3E and 4E and, and then we're just adding 2 and the 4 in the snare drum. So we're playing 1E and 2E and 3E and 4E and, and then the element that we are shifting throughout this that we are displacing is our bass drum. We start our bass drum on the quarter notes on the 1, on the 2, on the 3, and then on the 4. And what we do is each time we go around, we shift it. Now, I don't suggest practicing in, in the motion where I just did a measure or a bar of each. Um, but kind of master this displacement. So, and this is just the raw introduction to to playing ostinatos, and what it's really doing, it's uh, it's mastering this independence in a way that we're able to play something, you know, some sort of pattern uh, that's reoccurring between our hi-hat and our snare drum, and then shift our bass drum around, and you're also learning the different places um, of your bass drum notes and kind of getting a feel for all that. So this is multitasking, essentially, um, and that's really, you know, the idea of how ostinatos work in theory of practice, is that we learn to play an ostinato um, with either one limb or two limbs, and then we do other things um, with the other limb or limbs. Obviously, we have two feet if we want that we can, uh, that we can apply, and we shift through it. So what you're going to do is simply practice this idea of this 1 E and 2 E and 3 E and 4 E and, or we can go obviously much, much slower, 1 E and 2 E and we want to make sure that that space where the uh that we're not playing on is represented uh, evenly. So we can do a couple things. We can obviously count out one E and uh, two E and uh, and so on. Um, <clears throat> or we can kind of do, and, and this is something that I've been doing with some of my younger students who want to play faster. And when we have that space, we want to make sure that we represent that space that we're not playing as much as the value we do for the space that we are playing. Um, and I have some of them. Uh, just kind of grunting. Um, so that would sound like this. Uh, 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 uh. This way that when they're playing grooves, they're not rushing uh, the break, the space, the rest, you know, between um, those notes. But that's all the idea of an ostinato is. So I'll play a few bars of each again. I'll count through it. Um, again, you, your constant, your ostinato, your repeating uh, recurring pattern is between the hi-hat and the snare drum. Snare drum, like a, like a lot of basic Western world grooves is two and four in the snare. And then our uh, our hi-hat is playing one E and two E and three E and four E and. So uh, the three of the four sixteenth notes per beat. And then our bass drum is shifting. So it starts on the first, uh, the quarter notes, the first of every sixteenth note. Then it plays on all of the E's, which is the second sixteenth note in each beat grouping. Then it plays on the ands and then the uh. So this is what that sounds like. So I'll start with the ostinato. One E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. All right. And now we'll add the uh, bass drum in. And this will just come in on the uh, quarter note or the first sixteenth note. One E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Now we can add the bass drum on every quarter note just to really get that feel okay but then what we'll do is we'll shift it to the second 16th note here's that one one e and a uh, two e and a uh, three e and a uh, four e and a uh. and then we shift it to the third which are all the ands. One E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. And now we'll shift it to the last one. Okay. And I want to point out this one really quick. This is essentially the the space um, that we were kind of filling with with saying it or or doing something to make sure that we're resting. Which is really cool about the way this one happens. Um, that last kick on the the us will be the space that's not being played in the hi hat. Meaning, if this is playing the one e and now the kick becomes the uh. So it's the space 
is completely filled now. We have every spot of every 16th note throughout the measure covered. So that one sounds like this. One, E, and, a, uh, two, E, and, a, uh, three, E, and, a, uh, four, E, and, a. Uh. All right? So try those out. I'll go through them again uh, a little bit quicker. and But just kind of you know pause each section and, and go through and practice that. And then there's your first kind of introduction to the idea of an ostinato, just a reoccurring pattern. We kept it pretty simple, and we're shifting the bass drum and where it's played. Um, oh, and, and the overall use of this is you're really mastering the ability to play anything, at least in this case with single notes. The next step we would do is we would add uh, two notes. We might play the, the 1 E, the 2 E, the 3 E, 4 E, and then cycle through all the different patterns. But anyway, here's it with single note bass drum patterns, uh, displacing throughout each of the 16th note positions, and then this ostinato, this basic um, 1 E and 2 E and 3 E and 4 E on the hi-hat, and 2 and 4 on the snare. And that's it, ostinato. Enjoy those displacement bass drums, and I'll see you next time. Take care.